God damn it. Be my man. You're made. You blowing up all over the news. down these doors after what you and your psycho friends Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand. I've had the opportunity to do voiceover a few times. I'd worked on a cartoon. I had done some documentaries. I'd never done this much. You know you don't gotta speak out loud to talk to me. And I've processed some shit. Changed my mind. Don't want you dead anymore. You know, and got to play a character in so many kind of different ways because of different paths or threads or choices. So you almost get to play one moment, say you have a decision. Would you take a bullet for it? With three different behavioral attitudes. So that was fun. You know, he's uh, Johnny's either a dick or he's happy or he's trying to convince. You know why? Because you've always been a fucking pussy, Carrie. So it's been fun, and that was kind of what I was interested in, you know, the different options that the game could play, you know, playing the same person, but with different versions of them. Motion capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. Uh, so one of the first elements that I was involved in with the game was motion capture. I've done a, a fair bit of motion capture. I did it with, uh, in the Matrix films, so to start doing the motion capture for Johnny. It was all very familiar to me. The only difference, I think, technologically, was how close they were going to real-time review. But creatively, it was very familiar in the sense of starting a, a library of, of gesture and the toolbox, let's say, for the animators to work with for the character. Yeah! Yeah! So you get to see Johnny as the rock star, you know, you hear about his military past, you know, and he's fighting for his survival. So he's kind of got all of these things leading into the moment of this guy. It's really a kind of an interpretation, because I think there's a Johnny Silverhand in all of us. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a good sense of humor, if not a little dark at times. He's very passionate, he cares. It's, um, he's kind of naive, but he's also super experienced in life. He's got certainly an appetite for life. Oh, man. Yo, 
you're wrong. He wants to change the world, you know? But he has a cause that he wants to fight against the corpocracy. Come on. Don't tell me you're not interested. He's kind of looking for a different kind of freedom. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots, and now they're after our souls. At least I believed in something bigger. At least I had a cause. What CD Projekt Red has shared with me and the way that they talk about the game and what I've seen is that it's got a, a lot of freedom. There's so many different paths that you can play the game on. But it's not just quests of paths. It's like, who are you? How do you want to play the character? If I gotta kill, I'll kill. If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. You can go into action, you can go into mystery, you can problem solve in different ways. And where you go in this world, there's so much detail. There's so many different things that you can go off into that are really interesting um, and fun. There's a real drama to the game and emotional stakes to it. And then there's lighter sides to it. And of course, the music, production design, technologically, how cutting edge it is. I don't think there'll be a game that looks like this. Yeah, it's intense. I take the driver, you get his side too. Good job. Yeah. Bye bye. So hi, my name is Sarah Watling. I am the CEO of Jolly Research in Toronto, Ontario. In this video, we're gonna show you a little bit about Jolly the software uh, and Jolly in action within the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Rayfield's mine. Jolly is a suite of tools and a suite of services uh, that uh, result in uh, what we think is the coolest and best uh, and highest quality facial performance on characters. Oh, is that supposed to sound familiar? It's automatically generated on a face based on um, audio dialogue, audio speech from a voice actor. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. What Jolly tries to do is it tries to get to the root of what is being expressed in the vocal performance and put that on a 3D character. That's Rogue. Best fixer in all of Night City. There is just an incredible amount of performance in this game. Sure. A procedural solution allows you to animate over and over and over again at tremendous scale. Jolly is what powers every single character in the game of Cyberpunk 2077 in all of the languages that the game has been localized for. All you're doing is changing an attribute. For example, speech style. If you want your character to, to shout instead of mumble, instead of issuing a set of commands that redo the animation, instead you click an attribute going from, in this case, mumble to shout. But you walk, you bleed. But you walk, you bleed. But you walk, you bleed. If the lip sync is right, you don't notice. If the faces match and match the performance, you don't notice because you're too busy paying attention to how awesome the game is, how much you care about these characters, how much, what, what you're going to do. And that's what we want. That to me is, that's, that's the sizzle. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. This is probably the most stressful E3 of my life. And I don't know why, but I just couldn't uh, deal with the pressure. I was actually a shadow of myself at the C3. Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red's first deviation from the Witcher universe, is an action-oriented, narrative-driven, open-world RPG. Which is a mouthful. The game was announced in 2012 and officially revealed in a teaser trailer in 2013. But after that, there was... Nothing. After teaser, we kind of went dormant. 
there was silence for four or five years, which for me and for my community team was very hard because, you know, people were very excited about the game. When we first announced the Cyberpunk, we had a certain vision of, of where we want to take it. The main difference between the pen and paper RPG and the PC game still to this date is that ultimately, while video games are nicer to look at, the freedom that you have in a pen and paper RPG is something that we have yet to achieve in any game, I would say. We can't just take what is the source material and just all right, we'll make a video game around it, but we have to be smart about it. Being smart takes time and experimentation. Over the last five years, the cyberpunk development team has been crafting an experience that they hope exceeds the expectations of fans of both the original franchise and of CD Projekt's previous output. The reason why you can really go out and just show everything is because video game development is such an iterative process, right? What we have now might not be there tomorrow. So we've had ideas that have died over the years, then they have been resurrected, then they died again and now they're back. Cyberpunk 2077 isn't only set 50 years after the source material, but it also takes place in a parallel timeline. This gave the team the freedom to create a game that respected and referenced the source material, but also suited the shift to the video game medium. For example, it was vital that the player's character, V, be fully customizable. This was a real shift for a company associated with an incredibly iconic character like Geralt. For us, it's important to give players this uh, freedom to allow them to play themselves in our world and really immerse themselves. That is also part why we have the first person perspective, right? Because you don't play as someone else, but you play as I. Got a window on the left, go! The move to first person is essential to convey the scale and verticality of Night City, the game's sprawling neon-soaked hub. But this change in perspective, combined with a completely new style of navigation, including the ability to drive, brings with it a new set of design challenges. It's easy to make an open world that when you're on foot feels huge. But if you're in a car, it's 10 minutes. One feels like a huge world, the other like a not so huge world. And how do you balance that? How do you create the, the feeling of vastness? But those are the cool things when you challenge yourself to sort of push forward into new uncharted territory, right? And uh, you try to find new solutions to, to these problems. At E3 2018, CD Projekt Red finally revealed the first gameplay of Cyberpunk 2077 to a select audience of media and invited guests. We were so nervous and anxious to learn what people will say about the game because the hype was unreal. Soon word spread that it was the must-see game of the show. The team left E3 with over 100 media awards. But for the community of PlayStation gamers who had waited so long to see the game in action, the words of the media weren't enough. They had to see it for themselves. Two months later, their wish came true when all 48 minutes of the playthrough was made public. Their overall sentiment was amazing and the reception was great. So it was just very rejuvenating for us to, 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 to basically um, see those reactions and, and, and we're just like, whew, okay, cool, we got it. Well done. Cyberpunk 2077 may no longer be the mystery it once was, but work on it is far from over. True to the promise made in 2013, it's still coming when it's ready. It's rain wet streets, it's nights like this with fog rolling in, cars, faceless people going by doing the things that they're doing. There's something kind of hypnotic about it. That's when I get inspired to carry what these streets are like, what the city is like, the mysteries, the stories, the thousands and thousands of people that you pass that are going by as shadows in this wet, cold, dangerous environment. I wanted to grab that. I wanted to take it into the future. And where I took it was cyberpunk. What I loved was the fact that it was a combination of dystopian society, a lot of technology, with this really great overlayer of almost film noir. In a cyberpunk world, I realized real soon, was a world where people had the technology, but it didn't fundamentally change the fact that there was a lot of treacherous, nasty behavior, large weapons, and a lot of sort of serious danger all about. The important part in cyberpunk is just that. It's not the technology, it's the feel. It's getting that 
dark, gritty, rain-wet street feeling, but at the same time getting that rock and roll, lost and desperate and dangerous quality. Cyberpunk is about that interface between people and technology, but not in that transhumanist way where it's all about the technology changing or improving them. It's about how people use things. There's a great Gibson saying, the street finds its uses for things. And that's what cyberpunk is about. Cyberpunk isn't about saving humanity, it's about saving yourself. We've uh, approached doing this video game numerous times before. We have fought to find somebody who was enough of a fan of the world and the game to not want to go change it around or to you know, stick a label of cyberpunk on it and then do something totally different. And so when CDPR approached us, what we realized really rapidly was these guys are fans. These guys know the material. They're quoting things back to me I've forgotten. So they got it. And that's an important thing. You have to be able to understand why this world exists. They're dragging my butt all the way over to Poland several times a year. We're excited because there is a really strong element of cross-pollination. Uh, there's a really strong element of cooperative building going on. And that's really great. Cyberpunk 2020 was about early cyberpunk. It was a world in which people didn't know a lot about what the tropes were, the feel for it. The great part about 2077 is that it's a mature form of that. We're basically able to progress a larger arc. So you're going to get to see the outcomes of things that we started to talk about in the fourth corporate war. And we're going to be able to let players who played the previous game to see how those progress, see where they go to, and how they'll shape them. We're looking at the same mucky, nasty night city that you were in before, just a lot bigger and probably a lot more dangerous and with a lot of players you don't know about yet. 2077 is about the cyberpunk you thought you knew, scaled up, bigger, fatter, stranger. It's the visual component that the frozen pictures we would put in the books can't give you. It's the sound, it's the feel, it's the movement. 77 is going to be about being there. We've gone through a long, long journey, all of us. Those of you who have been fans have been waiting for us to get the right game together at the right time, the right team. And we were going to wait long enough to make sure it happened the right way. Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be the right way. And I can't wait to play it. And I'm hoping you guys will want to play it as much as I want to play it. Because it's going to be a hell of a ride. We started with the visuals and then we wanted to like uh, attach a proper sound to the visuals so that you have like a nice feeling or a nice vibe of uh, the, the complete car. And then uh, we moved on to uh, organizing the whole thing. Early on, uh, we made the decision that we are going to record on the racetracks and then we are going to record cars in movement. We started cooperation with Tomek Chopik, who is like very, very well-known uh, racing driver in Poland. That's really a nice sensation when you're driving with a racing driver and then he pushes the car to the limits. Like you can feel the, the G's with the braking and uh, tight cornering and you can feel the car actually like bending the laws of physics. We wanted to record a broad spectrum of cars. So we started with the powerful muscle cars and then we went to uh, more screaming uh, tuned V6s, inline sixes, and then we went to V10s. We wanted to grab the off-road cars. We of course uh, grabbed some uh, drift cars just to have the more aggressive character in the cars. We had to assemble a sound group or a sound team that would make the placing of the mics process very, very fast because we had plenty of cars to do in a short time span. We had the team of mechanics from a rally team and they helped us immensely. What they've done is allowed us to put the microphones into places that we wouldn't be able to access uh, differently. Putting a mic right into the car they helped us to locate the places that are best. Usually you place three microphones in the engine bay, three microphones uh, in the exhaust and two microphones in the car. Cars are very, very complex in terms of sound and uh, it's very difficult to get all the necessary components uh, that you have to have to make it sound believable. But we were trying to look for something that would give us the character of the engine.
We wanted to use normal organic uh, electric engine that you could actually have in the nowadays car. We didn't want the engines to be futuristic sci-fi-ish sounding. We wanted them much more organic, much more down to earth, something that would that would represent the combustion engine. And on top of that, we added small elements like the futuristic horns or like a futuristic UI of a car. It makes you feel like you are in a car of the future and some car might talk to you, other car might have blips and bobs that will make you feel like you're in a futuristic vehicle. We wanted to be uh, very, very close to what Mike uh, set up in the lore. And uh, early on, we decided to record uh, Johnny's uh, original car, which is the uh, Porsche 911 930 from 1977. We recorded it on dyno in control environment in a, in a chamber. We could put Mike in very different places. Porsche 930 that we recorded is the only car really that will be really sounding like the real car in the real world. We recorded more than 40 vehicles. Not often do we record so many vehicles for a game that is not really a racing game. Truth being told, this was the hardest part in, uh, in my sound career and I'm very, very proud of uh, what we achieved with the sound team. This was something that we didn't do before, so creating the designs, uh, creating the technology behind uh, how the sound behaves, that's the best thing actually I ever did in my sound career. Smell. Travel. Yeah. Journey. Freedom. No, you know, it's not like <laughs> deeper, <laughs> deeper. <laughs> I'm Gard Hollinger. I'm Keanu Reeves. And we're here as uh, representatives of Arch Motorcycle and we're doing some audio recording for Cyberpunk 2077. Arch Motorcycle is a custom production motorcycle company. Uh, what's unique about it is that the motorcycles are built on a production platform but each one is designed to be able to be personalized uh, for each customer. When uh, CD Projekt Red approached me about doing Cyberpunk 2077, they also spoke about integrating, they were fans of, uh, or I guess people who worked at the company were fans of uh, Arch Motorcycle, and so, they broached the idea of creating kind of specialized Cyberpunk 2077 version of the Arch Motorcycle. And I thought that was a very fine idea. We have a motorcycle we've, we've designed and we've been developing called the Method 143. And so that, I think in particular, was, was um, a creative inspiration for the designers, so they sort of used that as a basis and then went further. So it has a totally different, crazy looking power plant. We did a little customer. It's good, I like it. <laughs> Today we're capturing sounds, getting some actual sounds of a power plant, drivetrain, and characteristics of the motorcycle, which I'm sure they will, you know, have play with and stuff, but the source will be pure. has a sort of a racing engine in it compared to our production motorcycles. It has a, a dual exhaust system and it sounds pretty... <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I could definitely blindfolded tell that that's the Method 143-ish sounding motorcycle, yeah.
nature of the role-playing aspect of the game. I think it'll be cool like to be on a bike and hearing that going through the city streets and getting into the madness and mayhem. Even in the dystopian future, hard rap lives on. We want to provide you with the soundtrack to fucking shit up. <laughs> I mean, we're not here as refuse, we're here as samurai. It's a very interesting thing to be part of. We really work on these songs, trying to make them as good as possible. I think my music fits with my city because both are scary and pretty at the same time. My music will be featured in Cyberpunk 2077. I'm super excited. It's quite rebellious and it's quite noisy and aggressive. I think industrial is the word. I can't wait to see how the two worlds actually meet. I mean, it's been a lot of fun playing these beats. It's very punk rock in the way in its approach. You're building these systems to make really rugged, rough, edgy music. Psychedelic, trippy, yet uplifting and engaging. And you can see a lot of kind of industrial stuff and revolution happening. Sort of mixing punk music and like what electronic music could be in the future. So we have some tracks that are super dirty, super heavy, and then we have some tracks that are very beautiful and ambient. That was just a glimpse of what we have in store for you. See you in Night City. Score is the main vessel of emotions in both movies and video games, and Cyberpunk 2077 is no different. It actually took us a long time to find the right color of the music. Getting that sound together is almost as important as the actual look of the game itself, because the music is really helping you feel this emotional connection to the game. So one of the main ideas was to take the cyberpunk genre out of the 80s and give it a 90s flair. We took elements from rave, IDM, industrial, and make them fit our narrative purposes. We've decided that close to the 100% of our music would be purely electronic. That's why we tried to stick to analog synths as much as possible, so it's got a warmth to it. I'm super proud of the team we've managed to gather for this project. For me, it was basically my own personal aesthetic matching the aesthetic of the game. When I read the brief, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I can be myself. I can make music and it, it come from an honest place. I love the fact that the music in this game is so varied. So we have some tracks that are super dirty, super heavy, and then we have some tracks that are very beautiful and ambient. I'm using all kinds of different effects. So it's been uh, great to be able to experiment with the sound and the style. my first time actually doing any drum tracking for a video game. It's been really exciting, it's been a lot of fun. It's all about making you feel like a perfect killing machine. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what you are, basically. Well, I can do that all day long, so you'll just, you'll just, you'll just have to tell me what you like and what you don't like. Cool, okay. It's not gonna sound like one thing, depending on what part of the city you're in. We basically scored every quest, pretty much with custom assets created specifically for that quest. We ended up having over seven and a half hours of music in, in Cyberpunk. Working on Cyberpunk has just been insane. <laughs> um, I can seriously say that I've never worked with such a bunch of mad people in my life and mad brilliant. The gear that we use comes out of boutique shops or they are vintage synthesizers like this Polyvox. I really hope all this effort put into creating this score pays off with satisfying and enjoyable listening and gaming experience. Hello, Night City! What's shaking Night Good City? Good morning, Night City! 
here. Your man, Stan here. Ooh, I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. And now, a shout out to all the lowlifes over at the Atlantis. Ladies and gents, here's that all-time classic in Night City. Soundtrack is one of the key elements we use to build believable world. We've invited artists from around the world, incredible talents, incredible musicians, to write and produce songs just for us, for this project. The soundtrack for Cyberpunk is insane. So the soundtrack being all the songs that they've got going on, whether it's on the radio or on the background, all these just amazing bands. We've got over 150 custom genre bending tracks, all waiting for you to discover them by yourselves. You know, the reason I wanted to be a part of Cyberpunk is well, basically, I know The Witcher is super sick, and then I actually got to play a preview of the game, which was fucking incredible. I've always wanted to do something connected to a video game, so I was pretty excited when this came in, and it was like an instant yes. I was kind of imagining what it would be like being a character in that game. The person that's a musician in this world in this time has grew up in that space. This isn't just some fun shit, there's also an intellectual and spiritual history to this world that's been constructed for you, you know? We want to provide you with the soundtrack to fucking shit up. Like, how can you not want to be a part of that?